Generally speaking, fall fragrances can almost always work in the winter time, but winter fragrances will be a little bit thicker and denser. While making all of those fall lists, I realized that how the f did I not talk about oud? Today we're gonna be talking about the best oud fragrances that I find fit for the fall time in my collection. So my collection of fragrance is always growing. There's always going to be oud fragrances that's adding up. So if you wanna catch videos just like this, then you know what to do, hit that subscribe button. Let's go ahead and get started. There is a, a spectrum, a different spectrum in terms of price points, but all of these will work phenomenally, at least for me during the uh, fall time. So not all of these are considered safe and we'll dive into this head first with one of the honorable mentions. It's called La Thani by Ahmed Al Maghribi. This is an honorable mention because there's quite a few Ahmed Al Maghribi fragrances in the lit. What is, what is he saying? Ahmed Al Maghribi. It's a name. And um, I don't want to be too redundant with a lot of the recommendations, but the reality of it is that they make great oud fragrances for less than 100 bucks that last all day and smell like premium in ingredients. So Lathani is much more of like this uh, rosemary, leather, uh, and aromatic style of oud fragrance. There is like candied pear, can candied fruits, etc. And when you start to grab a lot of the, the you know, some fragrances like Qissa Perfumes, Imperial Valley, there can be some redundancies. And that's kind of why I left this just as an honorable mention. They have another great fragrance that's going to be even better for the winter time called Ignite Oud. This one has some resemblances to that, except uh, it's not as raunchy. So simple as that. Also lasts all day, and I think this is perfectly unisex. So starting things off with something a bit more expensive than a lot of these fragrances is going to be YSL 37. It's Oud Elemi. This is called Rue de Belle Chasse. And what this smells like to me is just basically this Oud and Oris. It's a very very nice and light diffusive style of combination. Although Oris is usually rooty and earthy, there's just enough of this musk that really recreates something very similar to uh, the use of the whole Oud and Iris combination without it going lipstick and buttery. So generally speaking in fragrances like Diorome Parfum, Diorome Intense, you have that Iris, lipstick Iris, the fantasy note, and the Oud along with some of that musk. Well, this one takes away any of that, that buttery lipstick vibe. It also adds an oriental edge coming from the resin and it's lighter and easier easier to wear. However, it does take away some of its mass appealing factors in a sense, uh, and it makes it a lighter style DNA that actually lasts. So although light, it stays on, on for a long time for the entire day. I rocked this, believe it or not, to the gym. It did just fine because of its light nature. And I know that this is going to be a beautiful fragrance for the fall time. It's not cheap by any means, and it might not be for everybody. And you could argue and say that there's more to it than just a root. It's not anything that's too animalistic or anything like that. And in fact, a bit more incense -y than anything because of the red. You don't have to be rich to get into oud fragrances. There are quite a few other cheaper alternatives, including this one that we're also going to touch basis on a little bit later. But for now, this is also another one that's a little bit expensive. It's called Royal Tobacco. Royal Tobacco to a lot of untrained noses is going to come off like kitchen herbs and spices, etc. And I can definitely understand that. But what this in fact recreates, at least in my opinion, is going to be Omani Bridal Bahur. It also reminds me a lot of Yemeni Bridal Bahur. And so uh, these are very nostalgic things for me because of the fact that growing up, the best types of incense, aka bakhur, that word just means incense, uh, was burned during festive times, happy times, good times. So when I got my nose on this fragrance, I didn't quite pinpoint exactly what I was smelling, but I knew that it drew that relation. It just drew, drove the whole happy, festive times for me, basically. And even if you don't experience that or have that experience, what this will end up smelling like is a lot of these aromatics, spices, tobacco, and even oud. The spices is more so than any barnyard vibe in the fragrance. It's going to be a lot of those spices like Feru Greek. There's even like this licorice vibe in here. It's beautifully balanced and blended, but it's not going to be for the masses. Most of these fragrances, uh, although aren't all complex, they're going to be more complex than the usual fragrances that most masses are used to. But there's still an audience for this. And ultimately, when you reach to a certain level of collecting, or if you're an actual enthusiast, you're going to crave more and more and more. And generally speaking, at the end of that more spectrum, it's going to be root because of the just just vast diversity of the intensities, the different cultures, regions, aging processes, and combinations. It's, it's endless, absolutely endless. So yeah, eventually, I feel like a lot of people will enjoy this unless your culture is something that where this is just foreign, basically, like you have no relation to this one. Ultimately, I think it's beautifully composed and in the sense that I presented it, I think it's one of the best ones, Royal Tobacco. Also lasts all day. And I would personally say that this is only going to be appropriate for special occasions. It's not the easiest fragrance to wear, but during the fall time, it'll shine 
the absolute best. Now, the other thing is that this is a long lasting fragrance, but it's not the biggest, loudest screaming fragrance, which does it a favor. So anybody that comes within about three feet of you will smell you, but other than that, it's not going to be a screamer. Whereas 37, it's kind of a cloud. It envelops you and it lasts almost the entire day, eight to 10 hours, but it's still not going to be that much of a beastly performing fragrance. So there you have it for both of these. I would say that 37 is more appropriate to even potentially wear daily if you have it like that, but Royal Tobacco would be special occasions. On to the next fragrance. This is something that you're gonna pay a high premium for. And I would say that yes, it is a little over, oh, well, it is overpriced, but you're paying for the name, you're paying for the price tag and the ingredients. So Ombre Nomad, you get Saffron Oud and what seems to be, it could very well likely be a, a synthetic Indian Oud, basically. Ambery, it's warm. This also has birch tar, so it's very smoky in nature. Uh, it's got that saffron, the leather, the raspberry combination. What you get in the air is the smoky woods, very masculine and rugged, basically. It does smell very high quality and it projects and it lasts the entire day. The projection of this is excellent. The quality of ingredients, the, the, the attention to detail from the bottle down to the performance, it's absolutely there, at least for this one. I can't say the same thing for like fucking afternoon swim, that thing, two hours. But this one, it's great. I haven't had a single day where I've worn this fragrance and thought to myself, oh man, like this is not a good fragrance, honestly. Uh, in terms of the occasion, it's a lot more versatile than people give it credit for. You could literally rock this any day where you just want to smell expensive during the fall, the winter, and even early spring. I've rocked this sometimes even during the, the summertime and I've gotten compliments. So a lot more versatile than most people give it credit for, but that's pretty much it. The only thing that I think about this one is the final thoughts at least is going to be the fact that the price tag is, is really high. It's actually, it's, it's too high. And so for that reason, there is the Shadow Extrait de Parfum by Fragrance World. The reason I picked this one over all of the ones or other ones that have a similar scent profile is because the quality of the Inky Oud, that, uh, you know, combination of the saffron, giving it slightly metallic and woody vibe, it's absolutely captured the most in the shadow, at least in my experience. So you're paying around $60 or less for the shadow. Check the links down in the description as always for authentic prices for all of these fragrances. And um, you're going to see that this one actually utilizes a lot of the same notes for a fraction of the price. Ultimately, if you want Ombre Nomad, get Ombre Nomad. It's going to be, you know, that 100% of quality and what it's doing. But this one gets respectably close, in my opinion, around 90%. So uh, yeah, you're talking about, you know, $60. Exactly. Yeah, that's the case. Also, another fragrance that I've worn on multiple occasions with having zero problems. Another one that's gonna be perfect for the fall time is called Rende Seba Oud Precious. Lesser talked about, uh, it's a smaller indie style, I guess, niche fragrance house, but this one was composed by a well-known perfumer, Olivier Cresp. And what this basically smells like is, is this cypress, a lot of these uh, forest-like woods, but not in a wet way. Like when you think wet forest or forest, you're gonna think very rich and earthy. This one utilizes more of like the twigs, if, if you will. Just think of all like like the dry forest accords. Uh, so it has like cypress or papyrus rather. Uh, and it also utilizes the note of oud and what seems like in a more musky and airy fashion. Now, although I say musky and airy, sometimes that can be contributed into like weaker fragrance or anything like that. But no, what it in fact does with this scent profile is it just creates like this cloud. It's a very 3D like fragrance that's going to linger the entire day and project and have a certain level of opulence because of that exact effect. It's like, hey, I'm present, but I'm not like super saturated and rich if that makes any sense. And so for that, I think that this could work for like special occasions, you know, first impressions, etc. cetera. Uh, so performance for this one is gonna give you about eight to nine hours. It's not like beastly, but it's absolutely going to be there. I do have to emphasize that it does utilize uh, more dry like woods. So there isn't really gonna be too much of a sweetness to this fragrance, regardless of what the notes might show. So yeah, that's kind of my experience been. It, it, it reminds me of like the whole oud for greatness, but a much more naturalistic approach, less of that saffron and a more what smells like authentic styled ambery oud fragrance. Not too barnyardy either, but it's still definitely there. I think it's underrated. I think you should try and get your nose on some of these fragrances. Not to mention, look at the freaking bottle. Absolutely stunning presentation. Next one on this list is Magic during the fall time, and it's called Spirit of Dubai's Turoff. Some of the lowest prices I found for Spirit of Dubai, at least, was Max Aroma, and you can also save by using aromatics and all that good stuff. Check the links, as always. But this smells, it has, first off, the notes. It's like, it's non-ending, right? But what it actually smells like is this beautiful fruity, ambery, a little bit floral and uh, oud fragrance. More so I would say it focuses on like this rich, creamy styled 
amber, basically. It has that woody backbone, the woody bass, maybe some animalistic accords as well, but fruity, ambery, and absolutely present. It's projecting, it's long lasting, and it smells very expensive, that's for sure. You do have to enjoy those ambery, slightly animalistic, but in that realm of animalistic, it's one of the lowest ones. Beautiful. And I've actually gotten compliments while wearing this one and Fajama from people who look like they're all about the money game, okay? It is what it is. That's just the reality of it. The performance of this fragrance, it lasts all day and it projected for a solid like three hours. And it wasn't like a projection you could just measure. Everywhere I was turning around, I was getting wafts of this fragrance. Simple as that. I would personally reserve this for like special occasions or also more versatile than that if you want to leave a lasting impression of like, yo, I got money. Simple, easy, but also very rich and opulent. You know what I just realized is simple and easy for me, but for you, for a lot of people who are trying to get into it, it's really not, it's really not. But it's on the better end and the more, you're getting a lot more than just a clear cut oud. You're getting fruits, you're getting like this vanillic undertone. You're getting these, this rich, you know, warm amber. So in that sense, it's more enjoyable. Next one is going to be more versatile than some of these. It's mint, it's cardamom, it's oud, and maybe even some musk. It's a fresher take on oud that you can wear almost every single day. Uh, of course, you know, too much of anything is not a good thing. So you're gonna water down the effect of the fragrance. And, and honestly, like even though you can wear this every day, I would personally say that if you want to smell like money every day, then yeah, you can. So to me, it just smells more elevated, long story short. It reminds me of some other Middle Eastern niche fragrances that utilize a more aromatic musky style oud, but this one also has those crisp aspects like mint and cardamom. This would be like the Eros of the Middle East, as simple as that. If we were to take the Eros DNA and Middle Eastern it out, it would end up in this. This is called Hirfa by Ahmed Al Maghrabi. So yeah, yeah, there are quite a few DNAs that actually do that. So if that sounded appealing, the whole Eros of the Middle East, it's that aromatic, musky, woody style fragrance that you're gonna see in a lot of other fragrances I'm going to be mentioning. Uh, this one having a bit more of freshness to it as well. So really good, it lasts all day. It'll give you more of like this easier to approach Western vibe. And so one of the best recommendations for beginner root fragrances that still wanna kind of test the boundaries. Performance lasts all day, it'll project damn near three to four hours. And the occasions for this is almost every day dressed up or dress it down to a certain degree, of course. For the price though, this is one that sells for like $65 or less. It's absolutely uh, worth the price tag. By Arabian Oud, it's called Al Farid. Al Farid is a beautiful, musky Oud fragrance. Aromatics like geranium with patchouli. There's this powdery violet. There's pink pepper instead of saffron, so it's not metallic. It's easier to wear. It's more diffusive, it's more musky, and even has a little bit of a salty ambergris. The quality of geranium in the opening, you almost always remember right in the top, Leighton, except it doesn't have as much of like this vanillic vibe. It's like a more Middle Eastern take on all of those geranium or, uh, you know, fragrances that use a heavy note of geranium, like Leighton. Drier, more woody, and more centered towards this cashmere oud vibe. A beautiful fragrance that's going to shine the absolute best during the fall, the spring, and maybe be during some of the winter days as well. It smells like royalty. The performance for this one isn't really the best. I tried to wear this during the summertime and it was a mistake. However, I will say that it'll give you a solid like seven, eight, maybe even nine hours. Although it's not like a beastly fragrance, you guys, the opulence and the quality of this, this scent profile is absolutely worth it. Especially when comparing it to others that are in the same degree, there is no comparison, but you are paying the premium for it. So I think that this one deserves like a nine and a half out of 10 if I were to rate it. Although I'm not, you know, trying to rate these fragrances, I just want to kind of give you the spectrum. Since we did mention something that's similar, right? Aromatic, cashmere wood for a much lesser of a price. This one is absolutely worth the premium. In terms of the occasions, weddings, opulence, like bro, you want to smell like a million bucks. That's the one to go with. Simple as that. Easier to wear as well. Abdul Samad Al Qureshi released in 2024 the Qureshi Blend Royal and their new Noir. I think Royal is going to be spectacular during the fall time because it offers a little bit more of like this gummy fruits, more ambery, less of that salty vibe, it's still there, and you still get that same uh, intensive oud and some lily of the valley. You get the classic Al Qurashi blend, which is like this incense or burning bahur vibe, except this one modernizes it out, adds a bit more vanillic vibe, gummy, and fruity. Simple. Far from simple in scent profile,
style, simple in terms of what they did to change it. Although those simple changes did make a significant difference in mass appeal. It's not going to be mass appealing. You're in the wrong video if you're looking for mass appeal, but rather pay attention to what the scent profiles are. It's still having some of those floral aspects, less soapy aspects coming from Lily of the Valley. You're going to get these gummy, ambery, almost melted style fruits and that incense and oud and bahur vibe underneath it all. Bahur being incense. So incensey, ambery, fruity, and gummy. It's different, but it smells really good. And I think during the fall time, it's going to be spectacular. You do have to like the whole sugar vibes though, because that gummy nature is absolutely there from the lychee. Next on this list, I'd place this in the same category as El Farid, but personally, I don't think that this is going to be as liked as Al Farid because it kind of goes a bit simpler. This is called Oud Elite Maali. I don't consider this one as good as Al Farid, but it's in a similar family and realm. Removing some of those aromatics, focusing more so on the musky, woody nature of things, and even intensifying the Oud. Simpler fragrance, not as opulent, but the quality absolutely shines. If you like fragrances that do, like a Tiab Al Marshoud number no. four or Sultani, Amiri, etc., this is going to be spectacular during the fall time. The best way I could describe this is aromatic musky with a woody dry down. There isn't anything that's going to be minty like you'll find in some of the other ones. This one has that mint and cardamom, but rather it's just focusing more so on like this brittle and almost crumbling style ashened woods. Simple as that. It lasts all day. It smells extremely high quality, but you're not getting as many accords as something like Al Farid. So high quality, simple, aromatic, woody, masculine fragrance. The occasions for this, you could almost signature scent it every day during the fall. And if you wanted a similar scent profile that has more of this fabric softener vibes that even more appropriately can work every day, it's gonna be Sultani by Arabian Oud. This adds berries at the top of it and makes it even more versatile. There's also additions of like freesia and some other florals that give it this fabric softener vibe of the Middle East while still capturing a lot of the essence found in this of that whole cashmere and musky woody vibe. So ultimately, if you want the best of its realm, I would say that Oud Elite Ma'ali will be the case. If you want that plus some of that fabric softener, Oftener, Sultani would be the case and uh, yeah vice versa there are a lot of redundancies when you start to actually get it there are a lot more fragrances actually believe it or not that get into these exact realms but out of these realms these are the ones that I pinpointed to being the absolute best another one you guys are probably all familiar with is gonna be Arabian's Tonka it, it, it's good it's good it's saffron it's sugar and it's oud. simple it's mass appealing it's very easy to enjoy if you've already gotten a taste for some oud fragrances like oud wood and safer alternatives uh, and that saffron sugar combination and really projects and gets compliments all freaking day. So Arabian Stanka, simple, it works, it's unisex, and it lasts all day, and it projects damn near the entire day. I spray this on a good eight times and I'm set. Occasions, I would personally say dress it up, special events, dinner dates, dinners, and uh, yeah, it's pretty damn versatile. For the price, and you can find this for under 100 bucks, I still think it's worth it. I honestly think it's worth it. Around $80, you're still getting something that's a oud fragrance, that'd be damn good. It's loud, it's projecting, it's long lasting, it's one of the best ones. Imperial Valley by Pussel Perfumes, if you don't know about this, this one yet or by now then you should definitely try and get your nose on this one if you like aromatic and musky fragrances. Imagine Halfetti Cedar by Panaligans. Now imagine adding a little bit more rosemary to something like that and even this musky oud. It's not barnyardy or anything like that and in fact it just recreates more of like this incense vibe to that whole cedar wood musky uh, rosemary. There is something that's very cooling almost like mint but uh, less intensive than that coming from that rosemary and uh, it's the signature scent of the Middle East. It's going to do the absolute best during the fall, I think, over every season. It's going to work every season as well. There's just enough freshness to potentially be able to rock it even during the summertime, which a lot of people do, and I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Dress it up, dress it down. Anytime you wear it, though, you're going to smell like you have money, preferably dressed up. Next one, Asatir Black. This smells like Hachivat meets Killian's Intoxicated with a little bit of Oud. It's so sexy, but it's definitely going to be reserved for acquired taste. You have to like the note of Oud. You get this rich soil-like nuance along with pineapple cream and coffee. Yeah, it's so sexy. A little bit of cardamom as well and an undertone of oud. It's different but similar at the same time. When I first smelled this, I was like another Aventus, but then I could smell like this uh, coffee cream as well. It was very sexy. Loved rocking this. It will wear relatively thick if it's not cold enough. You have to only wear this during the cold. And although it does remind me of other fragrances that I have, it's still very good and it smells really nice. I would personally reserve this for like dinner dates, dates, night time events, things like that, but it'll shine during the fall and the winter time as well. It's called Asaltir Black. Performance for this total longevity was about eight hours. It wasn't really anything more than that. And maybe this oak mossy nature
signature remained on my clothing to like hour 10, 11, but that's pretty much it. For the price, check the links in the description for authentic. Make sure you guys are finding these real because there are a lot of sources out there that might be overpriced. Ultimately, get it wherever you can find it cheap. See, I wanna say get it wherever you can find it cheapest, but you gotta make sure that you're getting authentic stuff. You can rest assured that everything in the description is exactly that. We're gonna end this off with three fragrances and um, shit, we still got three fragrances to go. I kinda wanted to put all of them in this list that I could think of. I know there are a lot of other Oud fragrances that'll do really good in the fall time, but these are the ones that I picked up for now. So there are quite a few. You're gonna see this list for the winter time as well that are gonna end up there like Azura Oud, Ignite Oud. So trust me, I haven't forgot about those and they'll end up there. Also, my collection is constantly growing. The next two fragrances, I'll just present them together to kind of save some time here, but they're both from Ahmed Al Maghribi and we've got Marj and Blue Oud. Marj actually smells a lot like Qissa Perfumes Imperial Valley, except it has a bit more fruits, making it more unisex and even slightly more feminine. So a lot of guys that have picked this up, find a feminine top to it. And it's absolutely there. It's got more pear, even tangerine. It seems like, like a little bit less on the woody vibe. And it actually smells a lot like another Arabian Oud's fragrance called Taraf. A lot of you guys might not even know what that is. So who cares? It's still aromatic. It's still musky. It's still got this uh, Oudi incense vibe, but it lightens things up. It brightens it up with an addition of pear and tangerine. It makes it fresher and easier to wear all year round. You could even rock it during the summertime. I have personally rocked this one and gotten compliments. So I enjoy it. I I think it's unisex, it definitely works. Unless you're looking for definitively masculine, then you probably won't have a problem with it either. Blue Oud, another fragrance from Ahmed Al Maghribi. This one utilizes a bit more leather. So it's almost like ombre leather parfum. This type of leather meets the, uh, you know, Oud incense and even a hint of like Oud Marcuja. And what that has is passion fruit, Oud, maybe a little bit of this, uh, you know, incense vibe to it as well. But predominantly, it's going to give you this rich, creamy black leather. It's not as creamy as that might come off, but just think ombre uh, leather and more so the original than the parfum. That's pretty much it. Both of these last all day. I wanted to save the performance for both of them because a lot of Ahmed Al Maghribi fragrances are crazy in performance. Let the comment section speak for itself. If you guys have experiences with these fragrances, feel free to share down below. And you know, oftentimes it's funny because like how often will you go and share a good experience on a review? But if you have a bad one, you're almost always looking for a way to share that experience. So I encourage you guys to share your experience whether it be positive or negative, regardless of the fact. And uh, in terms of the occasions for both of these, marriage can be daily signature scent if you want to smell like money, but otherwise both of these will do great dressed up. You're almost likely to always get attention or noticed by both of these fragrances and most of these fragrances. Last but not least, this is called Arabian Oud Nejd. And what Nejd reminds me of is like those ambery, floral, musky, animalistic Oud. Think of fragrances like Roja's Amber Oud, maybe add even a hint more of an animalistic musk. Smells authentic, smells naturalistic, and there's no way it is at the price point because you can sometimes pick this up for $150 or less. Smells absolutely regal and it's phenomenal. Roja's Amber Oud is actually one that has grown on me. I never enjoyed it in the beginning, but now I crave it. In fact, I wore it yesterday. It was a great fragrance. And I'm not gonna compare this and that. They actually have quite a few differences. Uh, the only likings that I'm resembling to this one and that is the fact that it's in the same realm. So if you think brighter floral ambers that's animalistic with their Oud undertone, that's what you get with Nedged on a different level. Also, last all day, projects like crazy. I smelled somebody rocking it to the gym and it worked. It smelled really freaking good. I know it's very unconventional for here in the, in the West, and maybe even for some in the East, but there are Oud fragrances that work as daily fragrances. And if you enjoyed this video, there's going to be just like this, Oud I've worn to the gym. I'm not gonna say that Oud you can wear to the gym that I've worn, that worked. And also daily Oud fragrances, etc. But not only that, I talk about niche, talk about designer, I talk about what smells good, that's all that matters. The best way to show that you enjoyed it is just hit the subscribe button, even more so than hitting that like. But that's a plus too. My name is Neep, thank you for tuning back into Aromatics, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.